Hello to all. We are discussing today a very important phylum and that is the Nemeta helminthes which is popularly also called as the Esky helminthes and this phylum includes the round worms. Why they are called as round worms? Because they are circular in cross section. Okay. They are called as round worms which are circular in cross section. All right. And if we talk about the habitat, then they may be free living or they may be aquatic and terrestrial or parasite on plants and animals. Again, I am repeating, they may be free living, aquatic and terrestrial or parasite on the plants and the animals. They have a long cylindrical body. You can see here in the diagram, I have shown the diagram of the Ascaris. I have shown the male Ascaris as well as the female Ascaris. So you can see that their body is long cylindrical with tapering ends. Tapering means pointed ends. These are the tapering ends. Alright. With tapering ends and without segmentation. In the next phylum, in the phylum Anelida, in which the earthworms are included, you will see that they have a true segmentation, metameric segmentation. But uh, they don't have uh, any sort of the segmentation. Though some people think that, uh, say that uh, they have pseudo segmentation. They have pseudo segmentation, but the actual segmentation is absent in them. They have organ system level of body organization. All right. They have organ system level of body organization and the body plan is tube within tube body plan. The body, the body plan is tube within tube body plan means at the center there is an entire complete elementary canal which is surrounded from all sides by the body cavity. They have bilateral symmetry. Generally all the worms have bilateral symmetry whether they are flat worms or whether they are the round worms or whether they are the annelids in which the earthworms are included. All have the bilateral symmetry. They are pseudo silomate animals. In the previous phylum Platyhelminthes you have seen that they were acylomate. That's why they were called as the flat forms. But they are pseudo silomates. Okay, means they have pseudo cili, which is developed from the embryonic blastocele, which has been developed from the embryonic blastocele. And what is a pseudo silome? Pseudo silome is a silome which is not lined by mesoderm. Remember, a true silome will always be lined by mesoderm. But this is a false silome. Pseudo silome means false silome, and it is not lined by mesoderm. They are triploblastic creatures. Triploblastic means they have three germ layers that is the ectoderm, mesoderm and the endoderm. And if you see the anterior end of the body, if you see the anterior end of the body, then at the anterior ends of the body, they don't have a distinct head. They are not having the clear cut head. In fact, I will say that in them, the syphilization is absent. Syphilization, syphili is word is used for the head region. So syphilization is absent. If we see the digestive tract, or I can say that the elementary canal is complete with a well developed musculopharynx. It is the feature of the elementary canal that it is having a well developed musculopharynx and also in the elementary canal the mouth and the anus and the intestines are found. Alright. Now if I talk about the body plan, if I talk about the body wall, if I talk about the body wall, then body wall is having cuticle, epidermis and muscular layer. Right, that is the muscle layer. Now, cuticle is non living, it is thick and resistant to digestive enzymes of the host. As you know very well, there are certain creatures which are parasite. Say, for if I talk about the Ascaris or the round worm, it is parasite in the human beings. So, might be the digestive juices of the host, human host, may dissolve. So, to get resistant against the digestive juices, they are having a thick cuticle. Just below the cuticle is uh, epidermis which is syncytial. What is syncytial? It is a continuous layer of the cytoplasm with many nuclei. Syncytial word is word used for multinucleate condition. So with the cytoplasm have many scattered nuclei and just below the epidermis is the muscle layer and the muscle layer consists of only longitudinal muscles. They have only longitudinal muscles. Generally it has been seen in the SK element these phylum members that respiration or I will say that respiratory system is absent though the respiration occur through the body surface 
by a process called as diffusion. Circulatory system is not developed, it is absent and skeleton system is also absent but the fluid pressure in the pseudocilum or the fluid filled in the pseudocilum maintains the body shape okay and it is called as hydroskeleton means the skeleton is absent but the fluid which is filled in the uh, pseudo seal that is known as the pseudocilumic fluid uh, actually uh, maintains a pressure and uh, it, it is called as a hydroskeleton they have hydroskeleton they are not having the skeleton made up of bones or the cartilage but they have hydroskeleton which is actually maintained by the pseudocilumic fluid found in the pseudocilum excretory system is H shaped you can see here that excretory system is H shaped and it consists of excretory canals excretory canals which are also called as a protonephridia which removes the body waste from the body cavity through the excretory pores okay and remember this thing that these excretory canals or the protonephridias are developed from special embryonic cells they are developed from special embryonic cells and that are called as the rennet cells okay and remember this thing that excretory product is ammonia all right uh, now let's talk about uh, the other two system one is the nervous system and another is known as the reproductive system now see the nervous system consists of circumferential nerve ring the nervous system consists of a circumferential nerve ring which is also called as the brain and it has longitudinal nerve cord approximately the number of the uh, nerve cord is six all right so again i am repeating nervous system consists of a circumferential nerve ring which is treated as a brain and yeah. it has six longitudinal nerve cords all right now uh, in the members of the sk elementis certain sense organs are also found if you have studied the Ascaris, then in Ascaris you can see that many types of the sense organs are well developed. So I want to say that sense organs are papilla. These papillas are basically tango receptors, means they are touch receptors and amphits which are chemoreceptors found on the lips and the facemids which are also chemoreceptors and they are found on the tail region. All right. So in them sense organs are well developed. If I talk about the reproductive system, the reproductive system is very well developed and they are unisexual creatures and sexual dimorphism is found just now uh, i have drawn the diagram of the ascaris and you can see that in ascaris the sexual dimorphism is found male and female are totally separate and always remember that females are longer than the males females are longer than the males and remember this thing that females are straight at both the ends females are straight at both the ends means female is like this type female is like this type see right while the males are having a little bit curved end this is a male this is a female so i just want to say that female is straight at both the ends all right while the uh, male is curved from its caudal end caudal means the tail end male is little bit curved male is little bit curved okay and male also at this curved region at this curved region at this curved region the male is having the pineal setae and this pineal setae helps in copulation or the coitus all right if i talk about the fertilization then fertilization in the members of the sk elementis is internal and development may be direct may be direct or indirect some members have uh, larva also so when the development is indirect means larva is there and when the development is direct means larva is absent if i talk about the larva then larva is a rhabditiform larva larva is rhabditiform larva or rhabditoid say for ascaris if i talk about the most common member of this phylum sk elementis that is the ascaris have rhabditiform or rhabditoid larva Check. now examples ascaris the most common example of this phylum is the ascaris which is commonly called as the round worm and it is found in the small intestine okay and it causes ascariasis it causes ascariasis the second one which is called as the voucheria or i can say it is voucheria voucheria bancrofti the complete name is voucheria bancrofti okay i am writing here voucheria voucheria ben 
prof tai this is the complete name this is the complete name of the wuchweria that is wuchweria bancrofti there is one more species also which is called as wuchweria malai wuchweria malai it is called as a flerial worm and it causes elephantiasis it causes uh, a dreadful disease called as elephantiasis also called as a filariasis and the carrier for this filarial worm is the female culex mosquito all right so this is also important member wuchweria escaris now the third one is dracunculus 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 mediensis again i am repeating dracunculus mediensis which is also called as the guena worm dracunculus mediensis is called as the guena worm it is also called as flary serpent it is also called as flary serpent encyclostoma duodenal encyclostoma duodenal is called as a hook worm encyclostoma duodenal is called as a hook worm loa loa is called as the eye worm trichula 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 is commonly called as whip worm and enterobius vermicularis enterobius vermicularis is called as the pin worm right so these are some popular examples of the phylum ascelmentis so in today's video we have discussed all the general features of the phylum ascelmentis or the nematehelminthes or the nematoda along with the examples so thanks a lot for watching me